Meantime, uh, Microsoft unveiling its new line of Surface PCs, including 5G models that come standard with uh, out chips from Intel or AMD, but instead with ARM-based chips from Qualcomm with first Apple and uh, now Microsoft mainstreaming ARM chips are ARM and uh, Intel's days, uh, or I should say AMD's and, and Intel's days of dominance in the PC world ending or not. And who is here? John Ford is here to weigh in on both sides. That's Got two get, hands. That's who you get on a Thursday. Yeah. You, get, you get me. Uh, and yes, Andrew, ARM-based chips have finally broken into the PC business. Their presence is only going to grow. Intel and AMD are on the way out. This is a big moment. I mean, ARM PCs were experimental for years until Apple in 2020 put the M1 chip in the MacBook Air showing off battery life, raw power on the Mac that smoked Intel's chips. And since then, Apple has spread custom ARM-based chips across every computer in its lineup but one. And the most recent PC industry stats, even though shipments are shrinking for every other major PC maker, Apple's are up 40%, according to IDC. So why is this happening? Well, as phones and tablets have grown more powerful, engineers have gotten better at designing chips with multiple cores, specialized functions like for graphics, photography, and AI. Now that technology is coming into PCs. And by designing chips, operating systems, and applications to work together, Apple and others are reaching new levels of performance. On the Windows PC side, Qualcomm is pushing into the game, offering ARM-based chips for the new 5G version of Microsoft Surface Pro 9. As a leading global supplier of chips to high-end Android smartphones, Qualcomm has tons of experience powering mobile computing devices, and it's well positioned to displace AMD and Intel. Okay, but then the big question to me is, you know, Qualcomm is going to be pushing Intel and AMD out of PCs. That's what we think is really happening. Isn't the window in the Windows market just a lot different than Apple, ultimately? Well, yeah, Andrew, on, on the other hand, ARM isn't going to take over the whole PC market. The, the Windows part is too complicated, and AMD and Intel are fighting back. So, yes, Apple has caused a huge splash with its M-series chips and the performance benefits, but there are lots of reasons Microsoft, Dell, Lenovo, and others can't use the same playbook. Main one is every Apple ARM-based chip is designed to work on a Mac also made by Apple, and practically every Mac made by Apple is running a recent version of the Mac operating system made by Apple. That's a high level of simplicity and control to optimize. On Windows, it'll be the opposite. Qualcomm and Samsung and others will make different ARM-based chips for PCs. Dozens of PC makers will make hundreds of slightly different machines around those chips. That's complexity, and it means the PCs won't get the same kinds of performance gains. Now, that's not entirely a bad thing. The diversity in the Windows PC market means we get specialty gaming PCs that are great for that, workstations for scientific work that run custom apps, that takes longer to switch to a new architecture. At the same time, AMD and Intel are embracing the multi-core model too, an approach sometimes called heterogeneous computing. Big change is coming, but it won't be all or even mostly ARM-based chips for PCs. Okay, so I have two questions for you. One, is Intel gonna come back? And you know, there's, there's views that layoffs are coming, but the second question I really have that relates to all of this is, so are you saying this is about chips themselves, meaning are the ARM chips that much better than what Apple's developing, or is it really a software issue? It's a combination of uh, the chip designs themselves and multi-cores and being able to add in AI, add in graphics functions, and turn them on and off depending on what people are doing. So optimize for the flexibility. Um, and what was the first part of it? First part of it is whether Intel can come back. Uh, there was the first part of the second question. But OK, <laughs> the, whether Intel can come back, it's still possible. But oh my goodness, this macro environment makes it challenging because they've got to spend these tens of billions of dollars on fabs, but they still got to pay out a dividend, right? Or the shareholder, come on. I mean, what are you buying right. Intel for? Still got to pay out that dividend. So uh, profitability is important. So they're having to prioritize and kind of belt tighten in order to spend a lot on these capital projects at a level we haven't seen. It's this is possible. very wishy-washy. I need to know what you really think. Is Intel going to come back? Yes. Oh, I, I can't what did you do that, first? Which one did, which one did you do first? Uh, that uh, AMD and Intel are on the way out. Okay. I thought he oh, always consumer did. Oh, consumer always He always sells me on the second one, so I always end up... But is that just last Maybe in, first just, out? You know, well, that's just that's because just it's the last one. Uh, uh, that's a statement on you. You just believe the last thing you heard. Yep. Right. <laughs> not okay, a statement so on John's not you, but, but you just matters. agreed with Becky on that? The last thing you heard. <laughs> yep. That's the joke, yeah. I'm easy. Talk me out of it. No, I, <laughs> you're going to do my, my request? 
on the, the most important, on the other hand of all? You know, you got me. Yeah. So it's you'll a, think it's about a good, that. I'll think about that one. To be or not to be. I'm actually cribbing off of Shakespeare, this whole idea. He, <laughs> Hamlet did it first. He did. Well, he wasn't, you know. Maybe that's what I'll do for time. Halloween. Maybe Halloween took, I'll come in here yeah. dressed as Hamlet and he do took on his, the other He took his time. You know I, what I mean, that. And then he screwed everything up. So. Yeah. People died. Just don't bring my uncle in here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Scary. Right. John, thank you.